we want to find the flux of the vector field across the part of the plane given by z equals three plus four x plus y above the rectangular region where x is on the closed interval from zero to five and y is on the closed interval from zero to four with an upwards orientation. If the vector field f represents a velocity field of a fluid flow, then the flux integral represents the fluid flow across the surface S. So if S is the oriented surface given by z equals g of x comma y, and r is the region in the xy plane, for an upward orientation, here's the formula we use for the flux integral. We'll notice how these first two double integrals were integrating over the surface S, and this last double integral, which we'll use to evaluate the flux integral, we're integrating over the region r in the xy plane. So before we set this up, though, let's look at this graphically. The vector field F is graphed in gray. The surface S is the part of the blue plane bounded by these four yellow planes. So this is the surface of integration. If we look down on the XY plane, the region R on the XY plane is this rectangular region here. So the value of the surface integral will give us the volume of flow across the surface S per unit of time. So going back to our work, because the surface S is given by z equals three plus four x plus y, we know z equals g of x comma y equals three plus four x plus y. So for our next step, let's go ahead and find these partial derivatives. So the partial of g with respect to x is equal to the derivative of three plus four x plus y with respect to x, which would be four, and the partial derivative of g with respect to y would be the derivative of three plus four x plus y with respect to y, which would be one. So again, the flux integral is normally given in one of these first two forms, where we have the double integral over the surface S of f dot differential S, which equals a double integral over the surface S of f dot n differential s. Or notice this differential s represents a small change in vector area, and this differential s represents a small change in surface area. So these double integrals over the surface s are equal to the double integral over the region r of the vector field f, which has an x component of y, and now for the y component, which is negative z, we're going to substitute the quantity three plus four x plus y for z. So we'll have the opposite of three plus four x plus y, and the z component is x, dotted with the vector field where the x component is the opposite of the partial of g with respect to x, which would be negative four. The y component is the opposite of a partial of g with respect to y, which would be negative one and the z component is one, differential A. For differential A, because this is the region R, the order of integration really doesn't matter. Let's substitute dx dy for differential A. So we have the double integral of the dot product. Let's write this y component as negative three minus four x minus y. And again, differential A is equal to dx dy. Limits integration for x are from zero to five, also given here. Limits integration for y are from zero to four, also given here. Let's go ahead and evaluate this on the next slide. So now we'll find the dot product. So we'll have y times negative four, that's negative four y. And then we have the quantity negative three minus four x minus y times negative one. So we'll have plus three plus four x plus y plus x times one, so plus x. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we have negative three y plus five x plus three. And now we integrate this back to x. So we'll have negative three y times x or negative three x y plus five times x squared divided by two or plus five halves x squared plus three x. 
for big F of B minus big F of A, when X is five, we have negative three times five times Y plus five halves times five squared plus three times five. And when X is zero, all terms will be zero. So we have negative 15 Y and then five halves times 25, that's equal to 125 halves plus 15 is equal to 155 halves. And now we integrate with respect to y. So the antiderivative is going to be negative 15 times y squared divided by two, or negative 15 halves y squared plus 155 divided by two y. Performing our substitution, we have negative 15 halves times four squared plus 155 divided by two times four. And then when y is zero, both terms are zero. So simplifying here, negative 15 halves times 16 is equal to negative 120 plus 155 divided by two times four is equal to 310, which equals positive 190. So this is the value of the flux integral, which remember does represent a flow across the surface S. I hope you found this helpful.